Darren, hello. It's the um, beginning of October and today we are looking at benchmarks for the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Uh, and all, what I'm going to do is walk through the uh, post that I've written and that you're currently looking at now to give you a feel of things. Now, I will emphasise that I'm not talking about the usability issues of this laptop, plus or minus. Uh, that will be covered in, in, a, in a different video. Uh, but this is just kind of talking about the oomph and bang for buck uh, that this laptop provides. And uh, I'll kind of mention more than in just passing the upgrades that we've, we've fitted. So it's an IdeaPad 3 uh, and the uh, base model number is 15 ALC6. And it's been configured with uh, the 5700U processor. Uh, in some markets you can get better than that, but not in most, including Europe. So I've had to make do with this 5700U processor, which as you all know is based on Zen 2, not Zen 3 architecture. The memory which was which was initially in there was 16 gigs. It's now a whopping 40 gigs of memory. And if you click on the links here or here or here, you will uh, go to the uh, respective articles on those upgrades. The uh, new NVMe disk is by Sabrent and it's the uh, Rocket 4 Plus which is acknowledged to be one of the fastest ever uh, hard drives or NV NVMe SSDs uh, around ever. And the Wi-Fi card was a bit of a lottery. Um, I picked a sort of more or less random one from uh, Amazon trying to read the reviews and seeing what might work. So the uh, the new Wi-Fi card is capable of Wi-Fi 6. Now, ironically, because I, I sit in a house with uh, predominantly uh, kind of fairly serious uh, routers and so forth, my router manufacturer doesn't currently manufacture a Wi-Fi 6 equipment. <laughs> so all I've had to go on is testing of the, um, the regular Wi-Fi 4 uh, equipment. So anyway, uh, yeah, this is a bit of a letdown. Anyway, Let's continue. Um, so if you if you run uh, CPU Z or CPU Z, you can see that we've got the 5700U processor. It's capable of so many things, so many instruction sets, add-ons, uh, and of course this comes with the integrated uh, Radeon graphics. So nothing fancy on the graphics front. If you want a laptop that does fancy graphics or you're a gamer, this probably isn't the machine for you. It does have, however, eight cores and 16 threads and that's what attracted me to this configuration because should i be wishing to run vmware or something like that then it's pretty handy uh, so i can dedicate a couple of cores to one virtual machine and another couple of cores to another machine and have them all running at the same time uh, again if you scroll through this you'll see what cpu z makes of the uh, the underbelly of the architecture so let's look at the disk first of all so the disk uh, performance was at around 2,000 megabytes per second. We're now striding up there at 3,700 megabytes per second as shown by Crystal Disk Mark. Now this disk utility does always come up with higher numbers than other utilities. So of course I've put the other utilities in there and I think they probably more fairly show the performance. So you'll see something like 1,600 megabytes per second. Uh, under under Ubuntu Linux, uh, uh, the card reader. Well, uh, it's forty megabytes per second. Um, I think that the card reader is a backstop. I think that most people would not use an SD card reader these days. I personally use a um, a high speed uh, USB memory key for all things. Um, uh, connectivity and so I, I wouldn't that doesn't really put me off so uh, um, 40 megabytes per second who knows if that's a decent value I think it's, it's decent enough for me uh, in terms of the memory well I think the memory speed is way faster than I need uh, in Memtest 86 there's all sorts of graphs and, and so forth that you can draw and have drawn all I can say is that I've got 40 gigs of memory in there the benefit of having a much larger memory size is that I'm running swapless so there's no swap file 
all and VMware is configured so that all virtual machines must fit in the available RAM memory. Uh, so there's no swapping under VMware either. Uh, again, that's the kind of thing I, I always use with large memory systems. Okay, so uh, now I've talked about the fact that we've got integrated Radeon graphics. It's absolutely fine for me. I, I'm a big YouTube viewer. Uh, as well as producer and I can just say that every YouTube video I've watched has presented quite fine. Uh, in terms of networking uh, I hope you can see from this uh, that the speed uh, of the networking is uh, is over Got that right in there. Oh, we've got, yeah okay well this is this is okay this is this is subject to further edit this is where I had uh, 10.5 megabytes per second. It's way faster than that now. We're on Wi-Fi based networking. We're already at 250 megabits per second. So sorry about this uh, rather out of date graphic here. I have to paste in new responses. We're well over uh, 250 megabits per second. Can I go to the article here? and paste it in, where are we? Oh yeah, I, I, if you see here, um, you see we've got 257 megabits per second. So, I mean, you can see we are, I'm sorry to say that article is, needs to be updated, I'll actually do that in, in, in a present presently. Uh, if I was to get this text here and do a bit of on the fly editing because that's always going to work, isn't it? Uh, let's that's it. You, get, you get a free WordPress level lesson <laughs> for no extra charge. Okay, let's paste that in there. So that's a more representative uh, situation. We've got 257 megabits download, and we've got an upload speed of 63. Let's get rid of that, shall we? That's old. So all I can say is that uh, we're currently running at the wires the, at, the, at the speed of the uh, internet services provider and its download at the other end. So um, I'm pleased to say that's that's it much much faster than I need. Now USB is a something that's been troublesome on this laptop. So this laptop's got three USB ports. It's got a, a Type A on the right which only seems to connect at USB 2.0. It's got a type A, i.e. the bigger sort on the left, which is uh, connecting uh, at 450 megabytes per second. Talk about that in a second. And the USB-C port, I must admit, I've, I've, it's a bit temperamental. I've got it to work, but I, it seems to not accept some of the USB drives that I've got. So to put this into context, I transfer stuff these days mostly on USB drives. In particular, I've got a, an archive file, which is a 40 gigabytes, and that needs to be transferred around the place quite a lot. Uh, and uh, waiting for that to transfer is, is rather annoying. And if we're transferring at 450 megabytes per second, it literally takes a few minutes. Uh, so it's still quite a long time, but I am transferring 40 gigabytes of information. Uh, as you can see under Ubuntu 21.04, uh, the timing of cache reads is now 10,000 megabytes per second. Uh, and of proper, as in buffered reads, we're about 437 megabytes per second. So what I tend to do is I buy the best USB keys or you can buy a caddy and put into it an M2 disk. You can either have a caddy that will accept a SATA style disk, which would be limited at theoretical uh, 560 megabytes per second, or you can get a caddy which would take a NVMe style disk, which is limited, let's say, at 2000 megabytes per second. Now, it turns out that the caddy that I've got that will accept the SATA M2 drive works absolutely fine everywhere and that's got a USB type A socket and that's what you're seeing produce these good results. The caddy that I've got uh, which has a USB-C connector 
which has the NVMe drive sitting inside it, doesn't, doesn't work reliably and it's very irritating. Uh, so these tests, the good numbers are with the type A caddy based uh, M2 SATA drive and there I always get 400 and something megabytes. So you can see here I did a, I did a time of the, of the timing of this uh, copy of this file and it's just under two minutes. So uh, it, it's, 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 it's good. Okay, uh, there's a note there about the things that for small files, even though I've turned off, um, it's safe to remove USB. So in other words, it shouldn't be caching it in the system. For some reason, for small files, it seems to cache it. So I, I don't know why that is. Uh, onto the benchmarks, well, running Cinebench, the, the Cinebench multi-core is 8,000 and Cinebench single core is 12,041. I think they're pretty decent numbers, it's a laptop. And um, my Passmark benchmark, which I run and I'm particularly keen on because they do very good CPU analysis, comes out at this 3738. And the CPU mark is which is what I use it for mostly, is about 16,000. So 16,000 puts this laptop slightly ahead of the current generation of Apple M1 chips. Uh, and that's to me is pretty impressive. Uh, so overall, my summary is that I'm delighted with the performance of this laptop. In the future, who knows which architecture is going to win out. Apple has made, of course, this great uh, stake in the ground with its new M1 ARM-based architecture. And for a while, I and other uh, technical people were kind of, I wouldn't say scared, but gave Apple the benefit of the doubt that, oh gosh, this is going to change the industry overnight. That hasn't happened, possibly due to the incompetence of other ARM-based manufacturers and integrators. So, for example, Windows, Microsoft Windows under ARM 64 bits is an utter joke. Uh, not only is it not very good at running Intel-based apps. Uh, the number of ARM64 laptops you can count on, uh, on, on, on one hand. So there's no choice um, in the Windows domain for ARM-based machines. And I would say that this computer, so and why am I saying all of this is because that the Intel X64 architecture doesn't look as vulnerable as, as previously imagined. We don't know what uh, Apple is about to um, release, perhaps before the end of 2021. But let's say that the speeds of Intel X64 based AMD processors is, is pretty damn impressive. So we've got a score of 16,000, let's say, on this laptop. That's slightly ahead of the Apple M1 processor and the probably the best you can get these days is about 20,000 uh, for a CPU mark. So we're really not too far behind the very best laptop processors you can get. And this is a sub 1,000 pound GBP uh, laptop. So overall, I'm delighted with the uh, CPU performance. I'm delighted with this upgrade. Mm, the network card's a bit of a kind of meh, I don't really think it's any faster for Windows AC networking than the card that came out, but I do now have Windows 6 capability. Uh, and if I ever get to test that, I'll, I'll update this post and make a separate one. So that's it really, uh, Diary. I think it's an excellent performing laptop. It's easily able to handle multiple virtual machines concurrently, let's say in the background, as well as what you're doing in the foreground. Uh, with the new uh, Sabrent disk, the, uh, the one terabyte size being the most cost effective, I'm delighted with that performance. Uh, and overall, yeah, I think the laptop is an absolute winner. It's a bit of a beast. Uh, battery life is not stellar, but then I'm always running it on maximum performance mode and we're definitely under five hours when we're running on maximum performance mode, just to note. So that's it, there's a separate usability video later where I'll talk about the quirks of you know how good is the keyboard, 
how good are the ports in terms of usability, their placement and those sorts of issues. But for now, that's it. Uh, and please come back and watch some more regarding the laptop. More to be posted shortly.